So, the question I received, if angels are truly winged creatures, do they have wings, or is this merely some Christian idea? Um, well, it's a little bit of both. Um, because if we look at the early Christian descriptions of angels, uh, they're not described as winged creatures. They're described as being composed of wheels or weird geometrical shapes, um, quite unintelligible beings. And this whole idea of winged angels uh, came about much, much later and it was really propagated by Renaissance art. Um, so the whole idea of the winged angel uh, is not also an original idea within Christianity. It is a later development within the Christian tradition. Um, but there are, of course, reasons for this. In the same way that many saints are depicted as a halo, or that Moses is being described as being horned, and that many angels and demons also have horns. Um, the essence of it is that we have various receptors on our bodies uh, for higher impulses. And one receptor is actually on the top of our head, it's called the crown chakra, and the other receptor is on our back. So it is in this area, halfway between the back of the heart chakra and the throat chakra, so it is located between the shoulder blades. And this is called the delta chakra, because it is shaped as a triangle, upward pointing triangle. And uh, through these two chakras, we can connect our unconnected consciousness with higher vibrations, higher energies. And as you can imagine, that when this top chakra is very active and people are sensitive to energies, they will see that there is something there. They will feel there is something there of a higher energy. And variously, this has been depicted as either as horns because you do get, of course, the contrast, because the um, chakra itself is cone-shaped and it is most visible close to the head. So if you, uh, and you perceive things by contrast, so this is where it seems the brightest. So if you would look at my head, I would have like two horns here, made of either light or dark energies, depending on what energies I'm connecting to. So these, in a way, form the horns which are often described in uh, biblical text for both angels and demons. Um, later, uh, people started to describe it as a halo, because indeed if you uh, start looking at it instead of just front on and seeing it like a structure like this, but you start to feel it around, then it can be felt like a band of energy, a band of light which is around the head. And yeah, so basically the, a very active, a very powerful, strong seven chakra can be perceived as a halo if you look at it more three-dimensionally than rather head-on. So this is where that comes from, basically from sensitive people, sensitive artists putting their impressions to paper. As to the wings, well, they started with the association, of course, that high is better, low is worse, underworld is a terrible place, it's where the hell is, the abyss is, and there's darkness, and the heavens, where there's the sun and the moon and other sources of light, uh, these are the better places. And the higher you go, the better it is. So many monasteries were also built on high mountains, many hermits sought these high places. And, uh, of course, the birds uh, have already, in uh, classical times, been seen as messengers from the gods, showing the favor of the gods through their flight. And by interpreting the flight of birds, people could tell the will of the gods. So the birds themselves and other winged creatures were very much associated with higher knowledge, with heavenly knowledge. So the association between bird, wing, wing, higher creature is easily made. 
we look at the energetic basis for all this, um, the delta chakra um, can in a way um, open up and um, have indeed structures which are outside of the body. And they are of course in the same place as yeah, in a sculpture the wings would be. So there is an energetical structure on my back which is connected to this delta chakra. And these energetical structure or wings, they help to attune to specific energies. So the delta chakra can accept many different types of energy, but through these antenna or wings or sails, we can catch energies from a certain vibration. And um, so these wings, they help the person to navigate within the cosmos to different levels of consciousness, different levels of energy, different levels of awareness. Um, and um, humans are not the only uh, creatures who have uh, such structures, of course. Animals have them too. And the idea of classification by looking at how many wings uh, an angelic being has and relating that to how high in order they are, this is actually a quite accurate system. Um, because we have, in a way, uh, three different realms within uh, the consciousness. So you have the world of form, where everything is only one thing at a time. Um, so I am a human being, I have only one body, I am only male. Uh, so it is all very singular and very confined to a relatively rigid uh, shape, a very relatively rigid consciousness. Um, that I'm human prevents me from being anything else at the same time. So this is very much the lowest realm, so you could say also the place where the lowest wings, just one pair of wings, will help me to attune to all the different layers of the form cosmos. So I can work with the collective consciousness of humanity or of the planet, but no more than that. This is my upper limit. But if I would have a second set of wings, the second set of wings would be more uh, ethereal, more high in energy, more gauzy, you could say. Um, the second set could attune me to the formless cosmos. So the formless cosmos is where all the uh, sources of energy exist. So all the planets, all the stars, they are sources of energies and these energies coalesce into a certain specific shape. Uh, so all the astrological influences ex exist there. But also you, your soul, the essence of your being, exists on this level. It is not bound to one specific form. The soul can have many different yeah, lives or forms at the same time even, or in different places different times. So this is already a much higher realm. And the third realm is the realm where in a way there is no um, division anymore between the person and the divine. Uh, the person is always aware of the divine, is almost a part of the divine. It's no longer so separated, so individualized uh, as it is if it is only a a soul which is in its fallen state. So you could say that indeed a being which has three sets of wings would be able not to just ascend into the into the astral worlds and the collective consciousness but even to go beyond with its second set of wings into the layers of power and enlightenment but also beyond that into the layer of the divine plan and the utter harmony within our universe and ultimately even leave our universe. Um, so you could say that indeed an angelic being um, would have six wings, three sets of wings as also the seraphims are described as having and that beings which are active in a lower order either they are not using these other sets of wings or they might not possess these sets of wings. And um, the size and the shape of the wings are also very uh, important, very telling, you could say. Uh, wings can be relatively small or they can be really huge. 
and the amount of force which can be um, collected by them um, yeah, really differs per size but also per energetic mass. So a wing can be very big but very thin, so energies will slip through, it cannot hold a lot of power. So ultimately it is about how much energy is there and also how is the energy distributed, which can be very compact, more or less like a glob, or they can be spread out into a larger sail-like structure uh, to catch energies with. Um, so often the wings are also telling of uh, uh, the purpose. Um, if you have very big, fluffy, rounded wings, um, then often it is much more about connecting, about uh, being able to relate, to connect in a very soft, downy way and yeah, just very gently picking up some energies. And if wings are more like the wings of a hawk or a bat, um, then often the being is much more um, focused. Uh, it has more of a purpose, uh, it maybe uses also its wings to fight with and if they're too big and fluffy and soft then they're very vulnerable. So these wings will tend to be hard, more solid, more, you could say, uh, reptilian or bone-like in structure. And I think it's also therefore that often um, demonic beings are described as having more bat-like wings, while angels are described as having more dove-like wings. But actually these wing structures, um, they're not specific. So you can have very demonic en energies or entities with very fluffy, nice, soft, pearly white wings. And you can also have angels which have bright red or black bat wings. So it is very much more about um, that the form is there to serve a specific function. So you can identify uh, a being by looking at its wings. But uh, you should also realize that depending on your own level of clairvoyance, you might not be able to see some sets of wings because their energies are a little bit yeah, out of your own range of energies which are easily perceived by you. So the use of wings can be done in a way to receive energies, to pull you, uh, to pull the energies to you, but you can also use them to pull your own energy body up into their level. So if I would spread my wings on a certain level, catch a certain type of energy, also the rest of my consciousness could be dragged along up into that level. So the wings are a very useful energetic structure, either to invite energy or to move to where your wings have traction. Um, wings are generally not um, grown in a very normal fashion. Uh, wings are usually granted by beings of a certain layer who feel uh, that you are ready or welcome to stay on their, in their world. So often you have to struggle to get into their world without these wings and when they like your behavior uh, you're doing things in the right way, you show enough maturity, you show enough understanding and you in a way um, you integrate, you really uh, show that you're no longer an immigrant who's just like visiting their country to yeah, get a job or to be safe or other things but you really become part of their world um, then often you're granted wings to make it easier for you to return and to go back to your own world so instead of having to struggle back and forth all the time. So it's a little bit like a, a shortcut or you could say a passport which allows you to go to customs rather easily than having to smuggle yourself in or uh, you can just take the plane instead of having to walk. So the wings are in a way not a nece necessary structure for spiritual attunement or advancement but they do make things easier. And in that way they're also a little bit of a, a badge of office um, that a person has been granted wings um, often shows that this person has a certain standing, a certain position on that uh, level of consciousness. So it is very often that um, spiritual masters or holy people um, 
or even healers or hermits are perceived as having wing-like structures. Um, another reason why a person might be perceived as having wing-like structures is actually because of possession. Um, a being can also enter into a person's body through the delta chakra. And if, for instance, an angel or a demon would enter into my body, and it would not like to be blinded by being yeah, incarnated into a hump of flesh, but still keep contact with its own yeah, native uh, level of, of energy, then often it will keep the wings deployed, so that even though it is acting from within my body, it still has access to like the energies which are yeah, normal to it, the knowledge which is normal to it, because if it would fold in its wings, and would remain in my body, then it would become as blind as I am. So this is another occasion when a person might see wings sprouting from a person if this person is actually being used by a being which has wings. So as I said, it can be of course uh, an angel or demonic being, but there are actually many, many spirits which possess wings and wing-like structures. And also these structures exist within all cosmoses. So the wings are not an indication that a being is from the divine cosmos. A being can also be from the um, luciferic, satanic or arimanic cosmos and have wings. So identifying by wings, yes you can, they are giving some information, um, but they are much more general. Um, also it is not really confined to um, the Christian angelic principle and uh, in a way in the, uh, the Vedic tradition often beings are shown with a multitude of arms and this is their way of also showing that this person has a reach into many different worlds, into many different cosmoses, many different layers of awareness. Um, so the multiple armed deities and the wings of the angels are in a way artists' expressions of exactly the same thing. I hope this answers some of your uh, questions on the significance of wings and the importance of wings. I hope you will get yours.